The following advice you are about to hear doesn't sit well with what you're told by the likes of Andrew Tate or David Goggins. These are men who are great for helping you light a fire within your belly to help inspire you to reach a goal at all costs. They will definitely help you to get into the warrior mode so that obstacles will start to seem conquerable and you'll find determination to push through the pain barrier as you have your eyes on the prize. Work-life balance becomes something only pussies care about. You don't need no holidays or time off because you've got shit to do and empires to build. And absolutely, it's through high pressure that diamonds are formed. But as is everything in life, without some balance, things can begin to break down mentally and physically if we aren't careful. The part of your psyche that is neglected most when you slip into the mode of the mission-driven Terminator is the lover quadrant of your being. In this video, we'll explore why it's important for men to make time to slow down and smell the roses. And we'll also share practical tips to help you reconnect with your passion and creativity, especially if you feel like you've been neglecting that part of your life. Robert Moore highlights the tension between the lover and warrior archetypes within men, emphasizing their differentiated energies and the impact on psychological development and relationships. The lover archetype embodies passion, joy, and deep emotional connections, often leading to boundary transgressions and potential codependency. In contrast, the warrior archetype represents assertiveness, discipline, and the ability to set limits focusing on action and mission. When one energy dominates, it can detrimentally affect the other. A strong warrior may create emotional distance, making it difficult to connect deeply, while an overemphasis on lover energy can lead to boundary violations, causing irritation in relationships. Here's a great example of an immature man with an unruly amount of lover energy, pushing people's boundaries as he performs for TikTok attention on a plane. Yes, you should be irritated because you respect boundaries, and he doesn't. Moore suggests that individuals must recognize and integrate these energies for healthier connections. Those with dominant lover energy can benefit from developing their warrior side through assertiveness training, while those with strong warrior energy should engage in activities that foster emotional connection and playfulness. For the purposes of this video, we are going to examine the psyche of the man whose lover energy is being oppressed. Men with low lover energy, often referred to as embodying the impotent archetype, frequently grapple with a profound fear of being perceived as effeminate or weak. This fear alienates them from their softer, yet powerful, emotional selves, leading to a disconnection from their lover archetype which encompasses tenderness and vulnerability. As a result, these men may experience a dull, depressed existence, lacking the vibrancy and passion that comes from embracing their full emotional range. Without access to their lover energy, they may develop rigid ego defenses, living in quiet desperation and missing out on the richness of life. In more extreme cases, this repression can manifest as addiction or psychosis, reflecting a struggle with their inner turmoil. This is because most people who have suppressed their lover will flip between these two states of the addict and the impotent, although it is possible for one of them to predominate, sometimes for long periods of time. Each of them can appear in varying degrees at different times in our lives. The oscillation between feelings of addiction and impotence further complicates their emotional landscape. They may alternate between compulsiveness and shame. This cycle prevents them from achieving a balanced self-perception, hindering their ability to connect compassionately with themselves and others. Ultimately, embracing the lover energy is essential for these men to cultivate emotional depth 
and fulfillment in their lives. To fully engage the lover within, you need to slow down and smell the roses. Have you ever wondered what women talk about when they get together and discuss their sexual experiences? Is it about how big a man was or how many times she climaxed? Nope, not really. Women like men who indulge their senses with soft touching, who receive pleasure as comfortably as they give it. So the saying, it's not the size of the boat, but the motion of the ocean, definitely rings true. If women could, they would teach us how to embody the lover in his fullness by slowing down, taking our time, enjoying the trip, and not worrying so much about the outcome. It is this energy of the lover that we could also apply more of to our lives in general. As Robert Moore liked to phrase it, we need to get into the garden. Okay, the final one. This is what Robert Bly is going around talking a lot about now. The garden. He's always going around talking about how important it is for men to learn to get into the garden. Well, it's the space of passion. The Garden of Gethsemane, the Garden of Eden. Uh, what can you do in this and what can you not do in this space? Make love, not war. You make love, not war. Do you work a lot? No. In fact, when you're in that space, you don't even have the faintest inkling about work, you know, if you're really in it. What's that? You know? Uh, you know, this is about the next to the last day of your vacation, right? <laughs> Based on Robert Moore's insights about accessing the garden, here are some tips for men to connect with their inner lover energy and embrace the space of passion and creativity. Engage in sensate experiences. Explore various sensory activities such as therapeutic massage, body work, or other physical experiences as a way to help you reconnect with your body and integrate the lover sector of your personality. Embrace playfulness. Encourage a playful and speculative approach to activities without attaching specific values to them. This can help men tap into their creative and passionate energies. Taking acting lessons or participating in improvisational activities can help men learn to display themselves, which is a key aspect of the lover quadrant. Explore relationships, reflect on feelings about relationships and consider assertiveness training to enhance negotiation skills and develop a deeper understanding of the lover archetype. Cultivate creativity. Create a space for artistic expression, exploration and imaginative activities to foster a sense of passion and joy. Specifically, Moore mentions cabaret and karaoke singing as a way for men to work on their ability to appear and perform, which can significantly reduce shame and enhance their lover energy. Embrace emotional depth. Recognize that accessing the garden involves experiencing both joy and sorrow. Embrace the full spectrum of emotions and understand the difference between depression and sadness as part of the journey towards maturity. Engaging with poetry particularly that which evokes strong feelings, can help a man connect with his emotions and the lover aspect of his personality. Moore highlights the importance of poetry in bringing out the lover energy. By incorporating these tips, men can begin to access the garden within themselves, fostering a deeper connection with their lover energy and experiencing a greater sense of passion and creativity in their lives. One poet who was deeply involved in the men's movement, helping empower men in the fullness of their masculinity, warts and all, was Robert Bly. And so we'll close out with some poetry of his. And you know, boys are not allowed to feel pain. You're supposed to have a stiff upper lip. Well, pain and grief are close enough to each other, so that if you repress one, you probably repress the other. Well, Antonio Machado was a great poet, Spanish poet, and here's a poem of his that I love a lot. The wind one brilliant day called to my soul with an odor of jasmine. 
And the wind said, in return for the odor of my jasmine, I'd like all the odor of your roses. Chato was about 35 at the time. He'd been working as a high school teacher for two or three years. He wasn't sure he had a soul. And he said, I have no roses. All the flowers in my garden are dead. And then the wind said, well, then I'll take the yellow leaves and I'll take the withered petals. And the wind laughed. And I wept. And I said to myself, what have you done with the garden that was entrusted to you? For the Empower Men community, if you haven't already, I highly recommend you check out Warrior, Magician, Lover, King by Rod Boothroyd, a guide that explores male archetypes in a modern context. This book comes 30 years after the influential work by Robert Moore and Douglas Gillette, who first introduced these concepts in their classic, King, Warrior, Magician, Lover. Boothroyd builds on their foundational insights, bringing them into the 21st century. He delves deeper into each archetype, showing how they can manifest in our daily lives. What sets this book apart are the practical tips and exercises that Rod provides. These tools are designed to help you reconnect with your inner self, embrace your passions, and ultimately become the man you were always meant to be. So, if you're on a journey of self-discovery and empowerment, click the link in the description to grab your copy today. Also, check out our Empowerment community on Patreon. Thanks for watching.